This is QTV News. I am Antoine Esonyasi and thanks for joining us. Coming up, the TRRC hears from a witness who explains how ex-president Jame took advantage of young beauty pageant contestants and another witness alleges being raped multiple times by Usman Sonko, a former state guards commander and interior minister. Turkey's embassy in the Gambia holds a celebration for its 96th National Day. The UN's Special Rapporteur on the Sale and the Sexual Exploitation of Children has ended a nine-day visit to the Gambia. And the Medical Research Council launches the largest ever solar installation in the Gambia. Stay tuned as we bring you more on this and other stories. A co-organizer of the Miss July 22nd beauty pageant and the widow of the late Alma Mane on Wednesday testified at the TRRC about the beauty pageant and the death of Alma Mane respectively. Babu Karsi reports. Tida Jata Jaju, working for the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, she is also among those oversharing the gender-based units. The unit looks into the welfare of students, the code of conduct for teachers and also co-opted in working on the beauty pageant which carried out the prize of scholarship, the brainchild of former president Yaya Jame. She recalled a nationwide selection of young girls from senior schools to join with those from the USA for the beauty pageant which she said was an eye-opener for most of the girls participating. She explained how the selection was done, preliminary stages up to the finals. According to Mrs. Jata, a special day was chosen for the girls to visit the president at State House and another day for a banquet at Kanilai. I don't know because sometimes, um, in fact, if the girls are contacted, we don't know. We know of uh, cases where these girls are contacted through us. If they are contacted through us, then we know we provide transport for them and we provide at least one separate for them and the separant will be with them. So cases that they are not contacted, if they don't tell us, we don't know. She said the winners were given scholarships by Yaya Jame for overseas studies, while those studying in the country at different institutions were sponsored by the Ministry of Education. At a later stage, she recalled an incident when she received information that one of the girls was allegedly abused sexually by former President Jame. Next to appear was Binta Jamba, widow of Lieutenant Almamo Mane, who was alleged to have been part of those who were planning a coup in the year 2000 and was killed by the military. Binta recalled that in 2000, her husband was called by Usman Sonko and he left for State House. At around 3 a.m. while in bed, Binta said she received a call on her house telephone from London Sane asking for her husband. She added that Sane said his house was being attacked. I put the telephone to my ear. It was landing. Landing son who was calling. He asked, he said, Binta, I said yes. He asked me, where is Almamo? Sana konya komole beng ataki kanna bunkono. That was the time when Sana informed me that there are people who are attacking me in my house. In the morning, she left for work but received another call that she should come back to the house because soldiers have invaded the house. On her return, she said the soldiers barred her from entering the room. When the soldiers left, she said the housemaid gave her a paper that was written by Usman Sonko reading, I received $35,000. According to Binta, the money that was taken from the house was $103,125, contrary to what Usman Sonko wrote on the note. On the 6 p.m. news on state TV, it was announced that Alma Momane and other soldiers were planning to overthrow the government and that he was killed in a shootout at Sting Corner. After her husband's death, she said Usman Sonko would visit her at home and over the course of more than a year would frequently and violently sexually abuse her, including an instance where she alleged that Usman Sonko's orderly brought her to his office and Sonko raped her. Sonko used to force me, force himself on me. He rapes me. You said you spent the night there. Because it was That night, did he rape you again? Ako was to fire rape le kotekebang. Singafula. Twice. 
Babu Karsi, QTV News. The Turkish embassy in the Gambia hosted a reception on Tuesday to mark the 96th anniversary of proclamation of the Republic of Turkey. Malik Nyang attended the reception and he files in this report. The reception was held at a local hotel and several dignitaries were in attendance to join in celebrating Turkey's National Day. The day commemorates the events of 29 October 1923 when Mustafa Kemal Atatürk declared Turkey a republic. Turkey had been a de facto republic since 23 April 1920 the date of the establishment of the Grand National Assembly of Turkey. But the official confirmation of this fact came only three and a half years later. On 29 October 1923, the status of the nation as a republic was declared and its official name was proclaimed to be Turkiye Cumhuriyeti, meaning the Republic of Turkey. After that, a vote was held in the Grand National Assembly and Atatürk was elected as the first president of the Republic of Turkey. At the reception, the Turkish ambassador to the Gambia, Ismail Sefa Yusir, spoke about the importance of the day, highlighting a brief history of the founding of the Republic of Turkey. The Republic of Turkey was founded on the 29th of October 1923 under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. His vision for a prosperous and democratic country, a country with full, in, full independence in all spheres, still guides us, guides our whole nation. On the occasion of this celebration, Ambassador Yusir further confirmed the strengthening of the bilateral relationship between the republics of Turkey and the Gambia. I would like to confirm once more that Turkey's commitment to the people of the Gambia and the Gambian government has been further strengthened by the new era in the Gambia. As you move forward to build the new Gambia, Turkey will continue to support this new dispensation presented, represented by democratic and humanitarian values. Lamin Job, the trade minister, Deputizing for the Foreign Affairs Minister delivered a statement on behalf of the Gambia government. Giving a historical background of Turkey and its bilateral relations, the minister said that Turkey could help Gambia achieve a lot. There is a lot, a lot we can borrow from Turkey. There is a lot Turkey can help us achieve in the Gambia. I mean, we have definitely shown great opportunities. Right now we have about two or three groups which are preparing to visit the Gambia in different sectors of the economy. This is just to show that our relations with Turkey will just grow from strength to strength. Ambassador Yusir says Turkey's relations with Africa constitute one of prime orientation of Turkey's foreign policy, reflecting on Atatürk's motto, peace at home. Peace in the wall. Malik Nyang, for QTV News. The UN Special Rapporteur on the Sale and the Sexual Exploitation of Children on a nine-day visit to the Gambia has shared preliminary observations of her visit. Maria Tusa reports. The aim of the visit is to assess the scope of sale and sexual exploitation of children in the Gambia as well as the measures and structures in place to address the problem. During her nine-day visit, the human rights expert met representatives of the government, local municipal authorities, civil society organizations, representatives of the National Youth Council, and Children's Parliament. She also visited children in shelters. After a visit to a Quranic school, Madarasa, the Boa Bococcio said, any institution which does not protect the welfare of children should be closed if verified. And I was visiting them, and my visit was was uh, was announced very, but very on very short notice. So, uh, but uh, uh, I'm 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 afraid I haven't seen all of it. I've seen that particular school, uh, but already that. Uh, I mean, even if I haven't seen these children begging in the street, I've seen the the, the living conditions there and there and the sanitary conditions which are totally inadequate. 
Uh, so um, that is uh, is definitely something where the government needs to uh, uh, to to focus on and and seek support also from from experts uh, in the international community to to ensure that. Uh, that kind of institutions uh, which, uh, in which child protection is simply not on uh, cannot, uh, cannot be continue to exist. They should be closed down. The Boer has also visited children that have been trafficked. She believes that resources, facilities and training are lacking under the trafficking unit. Also, it needs uh, training uh, to have skilled investigators. Uh, the investigation unit is, is a very small unit uh, and uh, they are in dire need of, of, of further training so that they are uh, appropriately also preparing uh, the, the whole file for the, for, the, for, the, for the prosecution department because, I mean, if that is not done properly at that level, uh, the, 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 fa the risk that the traffickers evade justice is, is very, very likely. The special reporter will make recommendations of her findings to the government of the Gambia. And on that basis, I will make recommendations. Recommendations by the special rapporteur are only what, they, what it says, recommendations. They're not binding. It's really up to the government to, uh, to implement them, but it is uh, presented in an in, within the international community. And the government of the Gambia is, uh, is expected to comply with its legal obligations under the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the optional protocol on the sale and sexual exploitation of children, which are two instruments which the government of the Gambia has ratified. The Boa Bococcio will present a comprehensive report at the forthcoming session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. For QTV News, I am Maria Tussar. The Medical Research Council Unit, the Gambia, at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, in partnership with UNIDO and the Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, on Wednesday inaugurated the biggest solar power installation in the Gambia at the MRC complex in Fajara. Speaking on behalf of the Minister of Energy, Lamin Diba, the Environment Minister, says government places a high priority on the provision of reliable and sustainable renewable energy. He added that renewable energy is key to the country's socio-economic advancement. MRC Unit Director Professor Umberto Alessandro says the commissioning of this 501 kilowatt peak solar system is historic as it is the biggest installation in the country. He adds that it will help them save up to 25% of energy production, thereby improving their services. Christoph Yitot, UNIDO country representative, expressed his delight at the successful completion of the project.
the solar project will cut down on MRC Fajara's carbon emissions by a significant amount as the unit uses 320,000 liters of diesel per annum, which translates to 800,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions every year. Also, the power consumption at MRC Fajara is close to a staggering 3 million kilowatts per year. The project is in line with the unit's overall strategy to make buildings and operations more energy efficient. And from that report, we take a short commercial break. But when we return, we hear about a young man who may just qualify as the most patriotic Gambian. And we also hear about a two-day African Youth Forum that has just concluded. Do stay tuned. Why wouldn't you? When you get to enjoy a massive 50% reduction on your pay-as-you-go data tariff. You know you get to enjoy such amazing discounts with QCell's fantastic network. Enjoy our reduced pay-as-you-go data tariff every day from 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. No subscription, no validity period. Simply recharge your account and off you go. QCell, the Gambia's quality network. With so many things to do in a single day, it's important to have a network you can trust. When there's family and friends to connect with and business calls to make, you need a network that is reliable and fast. Talk longer, browse faster, go farther and roam wider. When your network is solid, the world is your oyster. QCell, your trusted network in the Gambia. Welcome back. A Gambian youth is embarking on a patriotic mission of having the Gambian national flag raised in both public and private institutions. The national flag can be seen flying in some public and private institutions in the country, but sometimes in a bad condition. Motivated by this, plus the significance of the symbol for national unity, the young man is using his own money to realize his patriotic vision. Here is an excerpt by Mumud Lamin Choi. This is Useno Kole, but commonly known in the Gambia as Useno Gambia, uh, based on the work we do and the love for the country. The national flag is the symbol that unifies everyone. It's not uh, just like a mere piece of cloth, as people think. This is a flag that calls for national unity, it is called for togetherness, the flag that represents us in everywhere, that brings us together as one Gambia and the one people thing. So it's important people um, understand its value and, 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 and its role is play in bringing people together and how it represents the nation. The vision is, I want to see the national flag raised in all government and public institutions of the Gambia. I never relent in my effort until I see the national flag raised in all government and public institutions. Okay, all schools in the Gambia, whether I provided my money and the little I have, I can do it. It's working very well. A lot of institutions have uh, called me to say they also want a flag in their department. People have been telling me that there's location where the flag has been, you know. So it's going to, all, all these things motivated me. Let's flag all the schools and make sure that we inspire the young ones. We build the sense of patriotism in them. If you, are, if you have a ministry and have branch across uh, all over the country, make sure that all your branches are raised with the national flag. For the Gambia, it's our homeland. Together, we can. We value and love the Gambian in us. Thank you so much. The West Africa Livestock Innovation Center inaugurates its new council members at a meeting on Tuesday. The aim of the inaugurated council is to boast the West African ruminant livestock sector through leadership. Mamjara ACC reports. The Gambia's agricultural sector is considered to be the backbone of the country because of the various segments within it, including the livestock sector. West Africa Livestock Innovation Center, formerly called ITC, in its drive to enhance livestock production, the country inaugurated its new council, whose remit is to boost the potential of food security and well-being of livestock while safeguarding the environment. Lamin Kamara, 
Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, says the new Wali Council will support the genetic improvement of small remnants. Diseases that usually affect our seeds, our goats, I mean, there could be proper addressing of those issues. It can also give capacity even to, to our, our small remnant farmers. It can give capacity to do the, the subregion. There will be cross uh, fertilization of activities between the members in terms of work. There will be harmonizations um, between Gambia and other countries in terms of good practices. There will be um, a string of innovation. Um, technological know-how in terms of um, moving the, the livestock sector in the sub-region. The West Africa Livestock Innovation Center focuses on four thematic areas, which includes genetic improvement in livestock, building the capacity of livestock value chain, amongst others. Mr. Kamara Foda explains that the new council will work to support the development of the country's economy. Um, Senegal, Senegal now does not rely on imported ticks, um, like um, Benin, Togo, and, and, and the like. So we have the opportunity. And the moment we stop those things, it means we are giving, we are, gi we are making our currency strong. We are just making our delicacy strong because when we are importing like rams from Senegal, Mali, you need to exchange change the delicacy to, to, to safer and that is giving safer power. al Haji Nyangado, Director General, Department for Strategic Policy and Delivery, Office of the President, explains their efforts to promote livestock production in the sub-region. One of the plans is to increase production in crops and livestock and revitalizing this ITC into West African Innovation Center is part of those plans so that uh, studies and research can be conducted here and they are expanded to the people. You see, in this age and time, uh, everything is more related to technology so that it is not the hectares of land that you cultivate but the quality. When you look at our livestock during Tobaski, as rightly stated, most of the livestock breeds in the Gambia do not grow big, and a lot of the people wanted big ones. So by introducing the Livestock Innovation Center here would help us to be able to produce those type of livestock that we go out to bring them. The mission of Walik is to unlock the potential of West African ruminant livestock sector through partnership and knowledge based on solutions that will empower stakeholders. Reporting for QTV News, I am Mamjar ACC. A two-day African Youth Forum has kicked off at a local hotel in Senegambia. The forum seeks to institutionalize an open space for reflection and interaction between different sectors of African youth, including intergenerational dialogue. Lamin Dabo reports. The theme for this year's forum is engaging young African leaders in the implementation of the 2030 and 2063 agendas. The aim is to find the best practices to accelerate positive social transformations for a democratic, prosperous, inclusive and peaceful Africa. The chairperson of the African Youth Commission, Natalie Mukundon, says all the African leaders who led their countries to independence that revolutionized the continent were not that old. She therefore urged current African leaders to support the youth for a better Africa. Basically, we have what it takes, but we need a space, we need a platform to actually harness our talent, harness our innovativeness, and contribute to the agenda of the Africa that we want. Dr. Ibrahim Asal, the executive director of Trust Africa, one of the partners of the forum, explains that their organization works with civil society organizations together with sub-regional bodies like the African Union, to implement several activities across the African continent. International criminal justice, transnational justice, um, social movements, and uh, um, uh, gender equity, gender equality, promoting gender equality, uh, trying to stop gender-based violence, um, but also uh, promoting, you know, the work of small farmers in terms of, you know, getting better organized to push for the implementation of the decisions that the African Union made some time ago. The UNESCO Regional Director Dimitri Sanga 
said that as the present and future leaders of the continent, the youth need to be guided by international organizations and elders to follow the right path. As UNESCO, we are bringing them together here in Banjul so that they can discuss a number of issues that are of concern to African people, but most importantly, that will lead to reaching Agenda 2063. This includes issues related to climate change, issues related to migration, gender, education, health, and so on. The Vice President of the Gambia, Dr. Aisha Tuture, urges the youth to reflect on their activities and try to analyze whether they are being used for individual interests or common interests to save them from any form of vulnerability. The youth can be very vulnerable, but I know you are powerful. Your numbers are power, yourselves are power, you are educated, your skills are power, you can do it. So the Africa that we are envisaging and all our, in all our countries is for you to reflect globally and act locally to be able to bring those best practices in your countries, in your sub-regions and so on. The overall objective of the forum is to provide a platform for young African leaders to reflect and create opportunity to interact with others to find solutions to their problems and those of society. For QTV News, Lamin Alai Funding Dabo. And before we end this bulletin of the news, here's a recap of our main headlines. The TRRC hears from a witness who explains how ex-president Jame took advantage of young beauty pageant contestants and another witness alleges being raped multiple times by Usman Sonko, a former state guards commander and interior minister. Turkey's embassy in the Gambia holds a celebration for its 96th national day. The UN's special rapporteur on the sale and the sexual exploitation of children has ended a nine-day visit to the Gambia. And the Medical Research Council launches the largest ever solar installation in the Gambia. That brings us to the end of this edition of the news. Thanks for watching. Do join us tomorrow for more news.